Wands have always been the main weapon of choice for magic wielding characters in fictions. While Harry Potter carried a wand made out of holly with phoenix feather core, Dumbledore carried with him an elder wand known as the Wand of Destiny. But what exactly are the origins of wands? How are they made? This is Grimoire Archive. Today we'll be exploring wands in real life and how they are made. Number one, wands for summoning spirits. The Lesser Key of Solomon, also known as Lemon Gitan, Clavicula Salomonis, is an anonymous grimoire on demonology. It was compiled in the mid 17th century. It's divided into five books, with Goetia being the most notable book on summoning demons. According to the Key of Solomon, Book 2, Chapter 8, the staff should be of elder and the wand of hazel, that is of one year's growth only. They should each be cut from the tree at a single stroke on the day of Mercury, which is a Wednesday, at sunrise. The characters shown should be engraved in the day and hour of Mercury. The wand is specifically used to summon Beleth, the 13th spirit of the book. Beleth is summoned to cause all the love that may be, both of men and women. However, regardless of the purpose, the same sigils for wands are commonly described in other grimoires as well. Similarly, in the Swarm Book of Honorius, a medieval grimoire allegedly written by Honorius of Thebes, the magician's wand or staff for evoking planetary spirits is made of laurel or hazel, likewise of one year's growth. Wand should have four sides. On one side should be written the word Adonai, on the second side Zabaoth, on the third his heroes, on the fourth Emmanuel. On the middle of the wand, Make the pentagon, figure of Solomon, where the wand is held, a cross, and thus will be prepared for sacred and wonderful works. Another type of wand, known as a blasting rod according to the Grand Grimoire, is a rod used by a magician to control spirits, especially unruly ones. The blasting rod is held to have terrible powers over demons that will cause them to obey the magician. The Grand Grimoire describes the blasting rod as a hand wand with forked ends that are caped with magnetized steel. It causes the spirits to tremble, which God also used to arm his angel when Adam and Eve were driven out of earthly paradise, wherewith finally he smote the rebellious angels, precipitating their ambitions into the most appalling gulfs by the power of this very rod. Of this rod, which collects the clouds, disperses tempests, averts lightning, Depitates each and all upon any portion of the earth at the pleasure of its director. In conjuring spirits, the magician threatens to smite Lucifer and all his race with the blasting rod, sending them into the bottomless abyss. If the spirit fails to appear in magic triangle without noise or evil smell and answer the magician's questions in a clear voice, if the spirit still refuses to appear, the magician is to smite all the spirits by plunging the blasting rod into the flames and be not alarmed in doing so at the frightful howls which you may hear, for at this extreme moment all the spirits will manifest. If the spirit still refuses, further threats of smiting with the blasting rod are made, along with increasingly powerful incantations. Number 2. Wands for Manipulating Energies The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, or also known as the Golden Dawn, was a secret society devoted to the study and practice of the occult, metaphysics, and paranormal activities during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The Golden Dawn was active in Great Britain and focused its practices on clergy and spiritual development. Many present-day concepts of ritual and magic that are at the center of contemporary traditions such as Wicca and Thelema were inspired by the Golden Dawn, which became one of the largest single influences on 20th century Western occultism. The Lotus Wand, as described, is for general use in magical workings. The wand has the upper end in white color and lower end in black. Between these are the 12th color, referring to the zodiacal signs. At the upper end is fixed a lotus flower in three rows of 26 petals. As a general rule, the white end is used in invocation and the black end for banishing spirits or negative vibrations. 
The Phoenix Wang is another instrument of the Golden Dawn. It appears with the head of a phoenix at the top of a long staff with a forked end. The staff is colored according to the planetary colors of Kabbalistic tradition. It can also be used to invoke, charge, or banish the forces of the seven planets. The fiery nature of this wand gives special strength and authority to any magical operation undertaken. The wand ends in two prongs, which in ancient times were used to pin down poisonous snakes. Last but not least, the Chief Adept Wand is one of the most powerful and beautiful of all of the wands of the Golden Dawn. This wand is colored according to the four elemental forces in which the forces are crowned and governed by the fifth element of the spirits. The Wind Globe is one of the most bright spirit of ancient symbols. It's an emblem of the sun and of the heavens. Number 3. Wands for Casting Spells Number 3 will be separated into four parts. Number 3 Part 1. Tibetan Yakorn Wand the Nyingma school, literally translated as the Old Order, is the oldest of the four major schools of Tibetan Buddhism. Even though it's part of the religious system of Buddhism, the spiritual practice is filled with mantra, incantations, and rituals. According to the book titled The Shadow of the Dalai Lama, the fifth Dalai Lama or the Great Fifth had a terrible recipe book known as the Golden Manuscript, which was exclusively concerned with magical techniques for destroying an enemy. In the manuscript, there are a number of variations of curses. One description is as follows. A figure depicting the victim is drawn in the center of a circle. The figure is shackled with heavy chains around the hands and feet. Around the figure, the Tantra master has written harmful sayings like the following. The life be cut, the heart be cut, the body be cut, the power be cut, the offspring be cut. Now, the menstrual blood of a prostitute must be dripped onto the spell. The drawings are added with hair and nails of the victim. Alternatively, a little dirt scraped from a shoe or some plaster from the victim's house are sufficient. Then the ritual master folds the paper up in a piece of cloth. The whole thing is stuffed into a yak's horn with further horrible and secretive ingredients, usually poisonous plants and other unholy materials. In a cemetery, he entreats an army of demons to descend and impregnate the horn with their destructive energies. Then it's buried on the land of the enemy, who will be expected to die soon after. Number 3 Part 2 Menpaka Horn Wand in Pelo Meyombe Pelo, also known as Pelo Monte, in Las Reglas de Congo, is an African diasporic religion that developed in Cuba. It arose through mixing and melting between the traditional Congo religion of Central Africa, the Roman Catholic Church, and Spiritism. Central to Pelo is the Ninganga, or Prenda, an iron cauldron into which human bones, branches, and other items are placed. This is believed to be inhabited by the spirit of a dead individual who becomes obedient to the magician. The practitioner commands the Ninganga to do their bidding, typically to heal but also to cause harm. The Ninganga is fed with the blood of a sacrificed male animals. Various forms of divination are employed to determine messages from the spirits. The Mimpaka is the receptacle to the power of Congo, made of an animal horn decorated with beads, cori shells, and sigils, filled with secretive religious substances and covered by a small mirror. The Mimpaka is thought to be the eye of the Nenganga, or the magic cauldron, and also thought to be the portable version of the cauldron. When practitioners have to conduct spells at a remote location away from the cauldron, such as the forest, the Mimpaka is taken with them. It holds the secret to the cauldron. According to the practitioners, every cauldron that is constructed should have a Mimpaka in the cauldron. The instrument is thought to reproduce the flesh of the spirit. In VTT Mensu, or translated as small mirror divination, the practitioner reads or scribes by filling the mirror with smoke suit from a candle and proceeds to read the shapes formed from the suit on the mirror. Number 3, Part 3 Germanic Nidstown Pole. A kneading pole was an object used for cursing an enemy in Germanic pagan tradition. A kneading pole consisted of a long wooden pole with a recently cut horse head at the end at times with the skin of a horse laid over the pole. 
The needing pole was directed towards the enemy and target of the curse. The curse could be carved in runes on the pole. To construct the instrument according to the Iglesia Saga, he took in his hand a hazel pole and went to a rocky eminence that looked inward to the mainland. Then he took a horse's head and fixed it on the pole. To activate the pole, blood is anointed on the teeth of the head or the skull. He planted the pole down in a reef of the rock and let it stand there. He pointed the head of the horse inwards to the mainland towards his enemies. Similar type of pole known as Vingapi in Iceland uses a large fish head instead. In Iceland, there are modern examples of knitting pole used. It's thought that the tradition has continued unbroken since the settlement of Iceland. A notable example from 2006 happened when a farmer raised a pole with a calf's head attached against another local man with a note attached to the effect that he would not rest until the man was either outlawed or dead, for that man had run over the farmer's puppy. The matter was reported to the police as a death threat. In 2006, a local politician in Norway raised several sheep head needing coal in protest of local election. Number 3, Part 4, Egyptian Apotropaic Wands Egyptian Apotropaic Wands or birth tusks are used to ward off evil, mainly from Middle Kingdom of Egypt. They are most often made of hippopotamus ivory, a representation of goddess of childbirth and fertility. Some of the birth tusks bear short inscriptions and these always relate to the protection of high status women and children. They show a series of figures, most of them deities connected with mother and childbirth. Other figures appearing on them are double sphinxes, snakes, standing lions, naked women with lion heads, vultures, sun discs with legs. They were mainly used in birth rituals, protecting mother and children. Number 4. Crystal Healing Wands Right here is a Japanese form of energy healing which is a subset of alternative medicine. Reiki practitioners use a technique called palm healing or hands-on healing through which universal energy is said to be transferred through the palms of the practitioner to the patient in order to encourage emotional or physical healing. Crystal wand is an instrument used in Reiki. It's used to purify, energize, and balance the refined energetic area of the body and will allegedly help to move the energy in the body more effectively. Crystal healing wands gather and direct energy. The shape of a crystal wand enables the stone or crystal to direct its healing energy, as the wand's point focuses the crystal's energy on a specific area of the body or etheric field. What is your favorite wand? Do you believe these instruments are necessary in spiritual practices? Leave a comment and remember to subscribe and click the notification icon for more videos. Thanks for watching.